Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell joining you today from beautiful Honolulu, where we're all in person at PTC 2022. And joining me is Michael LaHood, COO of Stream Data Centers, and a new member of the team we're introducing to you today, Yvonne Dare, VP of Hyperscale Leasing and Development for Stream Data Centers. Thank you both so much for joining us today. It's great to see you. Great to meet you. Great to see you, Michael. It's been a few years. Three years. Yeah, yep. you've been busy. Been busy. Yeah, and there's, you know, we haven't been able to be here for a couple of years, so it's yeah. really great to, to see you in person and to, for all of us to be able to be back together in person. Yep. Um, so Yvonne, tell us, you, you just joined Stream. What, I what, have. what caused you, what, what lured you over? What made you join the team? So many reasons. Um, first off, thanks for having us. Um, I think the, the, the team is probably at the top of that answer. Um, just everybody's so approachable, um, so professional. Um, and when I met the team, my thought with uh, my career was to kind of follow that uh, data center and infrastructure continuum. Uh, so if you look at the infrastructure continuum, you've got the pops, the edge, and then as time sort of went on and the industry evolved, a lot of my customers' deployments got bigger, uh, more specialized, more bespoke, and um, I was really searching for that next step in my career, and I wanted to um, align myself with an operator that has a reputation and that pedigree of you know developing and delivering um, big, large-scale projects for big customers. Um, so that's what brought me here. Yeah, and I mean, I, we we know Stream well, and, and we've heard this from so many people consistently. It's the team. Uh, yeah. It's I can understand I why you Michael. maybe <laughs> yeah, with one exception or so. No, of course. Uh, um, but but Michael, what does this mean for you when you, when you sort of think about growing yeah. your team and and thinking about how that's going to benefit the hyperscalers sure. space that you work in? Well, first, I, I think if my team was here, they would tell you the real reason we brought her on board was she's Lebanese and I'm half Lebanese. So oh, that really? Was the first accusation okay. was I needed a Lebanese person on the team. Well, there um, you go. But no, in all seriousness, I mean, uh, Yvonne comes from a, a great, uh, not to overuse the term, but a great pedigree of data center background um, with her time at Corsite. Obviously, West Coast presence, which is something we were looking to establish yeah. uh, with a key team member. Um, but we're just excited about the relationships that, that she brings to the table, but also the uh, level of holistic knowledge she has in the space. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. I mean, with all of your expertise, how do you how do you see applying that to this, you know, your work at Stream and, and the customers within the data center space? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, the, the evolution and uh, the career progression has followed what the industry's done. It's really been... Um, handful of really large customers that have evolved over time. Um, requirements became larger, um, became more sophisticated. And if you look at the last 15 years where I've spent most of my time, it's been the same customers that I've been dealing with. Um, so when I came over here, it was very important to me that the team, um, you know, build me into a role and allowed me to bring over the relationships, but also allowed me to build on those relationships. Um, so that's been key. And um, if you look at the overall uh, structure of Stream, we've got Stream Realty, that's our parent company. Um, the insight that we have through um, someone like Stream Realty uh, with such a huge background, such a huge amount of investment across the continental U.S. Um, allows us to get into markets and understand where customer demand is strong and have that um, additional leg up on a lot of the, uh, the operators that are out there. Um, so combining that commercial real estate background with the data center practice, um, there's a lot of synergies there that I was hoping to capitalize on, and that's exactly what's been happening in the last two months. It's been learning so much through that lens that's so attractive. And it's always so fun, really, to watch stream. I mean, you guys never miss a beat. You just never slow down. It's But you would never know there's a pandemic the, yeah. based on the, the growth and all the great things that you're doing. How's that been for you, you know, navigating yeah. all of that? No, it's, uh, it's a fair statement. I, I think our industry as a whole has only grown yeah. uh, during the pandemic. I mean, and it's it, it, it's a little strange saying that, right? Because we don't want the pandemic to be the cause of, of um, more success for the industry. But but obviously, we've, we've embraced an even more digital world, remote world, which yeah. has fueled a lot of the demand. 
Um, we've just been trying to keep up with the, the pace of, of inbound requests, the pace of growth, um, supply chain challenges, which um, I know we're going to talk about here. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a question asked. Um, but I think our industry as a whole is as busy as ever. Um, we're as busy as ever. We're going to continue to add people because um, ultimately you have to have talented people like Yvonne to make make things work yeah. um, and then continue to make investments in new markets and like I said supply chain investment um, uh, expanding existing buildings you know that, all the typical stuff I yeah think, and probably I mean, a lot of my peers have said this it, week well so. no I mean it's you're exactly right it's a, it's a fair thing to say yeah. right where the industry is growing yeah. so fast and everyone's trying to keep up and no one really wants to say you know thanks to the pandemic yeah. but it you know it's just the way things have gone the, yeah. the way trends are going and, and it's 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 making everyone busy it right is. and so and so that's great and, you know and I know that stream has been able to to really adapt to yeah. this and and so can you talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. you know like how you've approached this from a supply chain perspective? Absolutely. Um, and that was one of uh, the things that I was so impressed with when I came on board. Yeah. Um, it was really the construction team that we have um, their backgrounds, um, and more importantly, the supplier relationships that they had in place. Um, and when we came up against these, you know, hard times where you, you saw significant delays in supply chain, um, it was those relationships coupled with just a really strong uh, investment and commitment to an inventory program. Uh, we have the ability to redirect um, you know, components within that supply chain to different locations where priority projects are set to be delivered first. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that was really refreshing to see that they've thought ahead of that. Um, and then in addition to that, I think there's a huge level of transparency that was uh, really nice to, to be able to have those conversations with the customers so that they're always in lockstep with our uh, vision and where we're going with, with our programs. Um, and I think sort of to, to, to tie it all together, I don't, you know, to his point, demand's not going away, it's getting bigger. And vendors and suppliers and operators and developers have to adapt the supply chain to it. Um, so yeah. So uh, just, I guess, in closing for both of you, um, what now? I mean, you're, you're new to the team, mm -hmm. sort of initial thoughts on, you know, you've already shared quite a few observations, but initial thoughts on kind of where you see things going and, and 2022, we're just, we're just sort of dipping our toes into 2022. What's next? You want to take that one? Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, these are always fun questions because there's yeah. things we can say, things we can't yeah. say. Right, so, <laughs> of so, course, and uh, we want you to say it all. The but, super yeah. exciting stuff I can't say. No, okay. um, uh, I'm kidding. Uh, no, well, I mean, we're we're. It's no secret we're um, have a large footprint in Texas. We're going to keep expanding that. Uh, Chicago, we're going to continue to expand there. Uh, Phoenix, we have a very large campus. Um, we'll continue to grow. And then we're uh, we're close to announcing um, an opportunity in Northern Virginia, which we're excited about. We were uh, in the market there for for a little bit, but we actually ended up selling the land, um, which is something that we will do. We do sell sell land in addition to offer you know turnkey uh, data center um, space. So I think you'll see us continue to invest in those markets. Um, international is is not quite in play for us yet, from a, um, in, at least in terms of 2022. But we will start to map out opportunities there. Um, but in general, it's, it's, it's continuing to just double down on the markets we're in and, and there, uh, yeah, we have, um, uh, uh, space in Minnesota, space in Houston, um, excited about opportunities, um, or client, client, uh, potential client opportunities in those markets. Um, but really just U U S demand is through the roof and we're going to keep supporting our customers here. Yeah. Just keep on moving and yeah. keeping up. Right. Yeah. And and adapting and responding and doing all the things that you've done so well That's already. Right. Um, Yvonne, it's been so great to meet you. We Same look here. forward to many more of these uh, chances to Absolutely. see you and, and to chat with you. Uh, and thank you, Michael. Yeah. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Happy networking.